Hello my dear students, you are watching Teachers Daily. I am Rajita Sudhir here with you. Today we are going to learn about third chapter of class 9. What is the name of the chapter? Atoms and Molecules. Here I am showing you a picture. Can you identify what is this? Yes, you are right. This is Burj Khalifa. How it is made up of? You know that Burj Khalifa is made up of small rooms and each rooms are constructed by walls. And each walls are made up of small bricks. So what we can understand from this? Small bricks are the building blocks of this Burj Khalifa. So here next I am showing another example. Can you identify the picture? Yes, you are right. This is an hill. How it is made up of? Ant hills are made up of small sand grains. So what we can say? Sand grains are the building blocks of ant hills. If you take a closer look at small sand grains through a scanning tunneling microscope, you can see millions of smaller particles. So these particles are very minuscule in nature and we can say that these particles are called atoms. So we know that atoms are very very small particles. So atoms are the building blocks of our matter. An object that occupies space and has mass is called matter. Matter is always found in three states. Solid, liquid and gases. Here you can see the picture of solid, liquid and gases. Matter is made up of Millions of tiny particles called atoms, whether it is solid, liquid or gases, but the basic form is atoms. Atom comes from a Greek word, atomos. You can see the word here, atomos, which means indivisible. I will spell the word again. What is atomos? A-T-O-M-O-S, which means indivisible. Our next topic is how small these atoms are. We can't ever imagine how small these atoms because atoms are very small and smaller than anything that we can imagine. When you look at the silicon sheets, you can see millions of atoms are seen on its surface. Since the atoms are very small, why should we take care of them? We have to take care of them because our entire world is made up of atoms. We can't feel but they are there and constantly affecting whatever we do. Since the atoms are very small, how we have to find the size of the atom? So our next heading is atomic size. How we can find the atomic size? Atomic radius is always measured in nanometers. So how we can express? 1 nanometer is equal to 1 divided by 10 raised to 9 meter. So how we can simplify this? 1 nanometer is equal to 10 raised to minus 9 meter. Hydrogen atom is the smallest among these. Since the atoms are very small, it is usually measured in nanometers. So you know that 1 divided by 10 raised to 9 meter is equal to 1 nanometer. Similarly, we can write 1 nanometer is equal to 1 upon 10 raised to 9 meter or we can write 10 raised to minus 9 meter. So, you have to learn this question is very very important. You know that you have multiple choice question for your exam. So, you can expect this question for your exam. So, I will repeat since the atoms are very small, atomic radius of atom is usually measured in nanometers. So, 1 nanometer is equal to 1 upon 10 raised to 9 meter or we can write 10 raised to minus 9 meter. Now, I am showing you a table. Here you can see some examples with the different atomic radius. So, first one you know that atom of hydrogen. There are 118 elements present on earth till now. Hydrogen is the simplest one. So, what is the atomic radius of hydrogen? 10 raised to minus 10 that is 1 upon 10 raised to 10. I am telling you a new information. Actually 10 raised to minus 10 which is equal to a raised to 0 which is a letter in the Swedish alphabet. So, what it is called? Angstrom. Angstrom. 
A raised to 0 means 110 billionth of a meter. So, from this you can understand how small these atoms are. So, what is 10 raised to minus 10? 110 billionth of a meter. Second one, molecule of water. You know that molecule of water means 2 hydrogen reacts with 1 oxygen gives molecule of water. So, what is the atomic radius of molecule of water? 10 raised to minus 9 that is 1 upon 10 raised to 9. So, third one molecule of hemoglobin. You know what is hemoglobin? Hemoglobin is a protein present in RBC. What is the full form of RBC? Red blood corpseless. So, what is the atomic radius of hemoglobin? 10 raised to minus 8 that is 1 upon 10 raised to 8 meter. Next one grain of sand. What is the atomic radius of grain of sand? 10 raised to minus 4 that is 1 upon 10 raised to 4. Second last one and you know that and is a small creature. What is the atomic radius of and? 10 raised to minus 2. Last one watermelon. What is the atomic radius of watermelon? 10 raised to minus 1 that is 1 upon 10 meter. Suppose there are 50 students in your class. They don't have their names. If you want to call any one of your friend, how would you call them? Because you don't know their names. If you know their names, it will be really easy for you to call them. Similarly, atom to possess specific names so that they can be denoted by their names. So, Dalton was the first scientist. Dalton was the first scientist to use the symbols for the identification of elements. Here you can see the table of some elements anticipated by Dalton. So, these are the symbols anticipated by Dalton. So, here you can see symbol of hydrogen, carbon, oxygen, phosphorus. So, here how phosphorus look you can see like this. So, sulfur, iron, copper, lead. Lead is easy only L capital S is inside the circle. Silver also same like capital S is inside the circle. So, gold, platinum, mercury. You know that at that time only few elements are known. As the number of elements increased, it became very difficult to draw the symbols for each element. So, Bersillus suggested an easy way to identify the symbol. So, who suggested Bersillus? You have to note this question. Dalton was the first scientist to use the symbols for the identification of elements. Secondly, Bersillus suggested first letter or first two letters of the alphabet to denote the element. So, don't confuse. Dalton was the first scientist. So, who identified symbol first? Dalton. Secondly, because you know that at that time only few elements known. So, this is why Bersillus suggested what? For drawing symbols for each element is very difficult. So, this is why Bersillus suggested First letter or first two letters of the alphabet to denote the element. You got it? So, now we can see. For example, hydrogen. So, what is the first letter of hydrogen? H. So, that means H is the symbol for hydrogen. Here you can see some examples. So, first one is hydrogen. So, what is the first letter of hydrogen? H. That means H is the symbol for hydrogen. So, don't confuse. What is the symbol for hydrogen? H is the symbol for hydrogen. Second one, helium. So, here don't take H for helium because already H took for hydrogen. So, H is the symbol for helium. So, Bersillus suggested first letter or first two letters of the alphabet to denote the element. Third one, lithium. Li is the symbol for lithium. Next oxygen. O is the symbol for oxygen. I is the symbol for iodine. Next one beryllium. Be is the symbol for beryllium. Boron. B is the symbol for boron. So don't take BO for boron. B is the symbol for boron. Similarly Be is the symbol for beryllium. Next is calcium. Ca is the symbol for calcium. So, you know that there is carbon. Carbon is an element. What is the symbol for carbon? C is the symbol for carbon. So, Ca is the symbol for calcium. 
Next one, argon. AR is the symbol for argon. So, I hope you understood. So, we have discussed atoms are very small, smaller than anything that we can imagine or compare with. But atom is very important to us because our entire world is made up of atom. So, as the number of elements increase, it became very difficult. So, Bersillus insisted first letter or first two letters of the alphabet to denote the element. So, I am ending today's session. If you need any clarification, you can mention in the comment box. If you like my videos, please like, share and subscribe.